Hello, family. I want to take a quick minute before we jump into the message to just honor our brothers and sisters who said yes in support and defense of our freedom. Happy Veterans Day. I so appreciate you. God's word is powerful. He says, no greater love than this, and one would lay his life down for another. And so thank you for saying yes in defense of our freedom, in defense of our people, in defense of us. But I want you to know that God understands that ultimately we've been set free from the enemy, that Jesus came in response to our desperate need for saving. And Jesus came and he sacrificed himself. And so he gets it. So moms, dads, husbands, wives, children, as you are praying to God for your dad, for your brother, for your husband, for your friend, for your neighbor, for your nephew, your grandson, your granddaughter, listen, God gets it. He understands. If you're praying for your mom, your aunt, your uncle, your sister, God understands because God the Father sent his son to take your place in mine. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are serving in a time where there are wars and rumors of wars, that they would be reminded of the words you told Joshua, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous, that they would be strong in the Lord, that in their weakness, they would be made strong. They would trust in you. They would cry out to you. And Father, I pray for those that are waiting for the return of loved ones. I pray that you would encourage them, that you would comfort them, that you, you would remind them that you're right there and that they can talk to you that you understand. I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace and you are our banner, our God, our King. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, we are moving forward in part three of this series, Choosing to be Faithful and Wise. We've been studying these amazing priorities and this one has been so good. As we jump right in, I wanna, I wanna just encourage you to, to read along. We've been in Matthew 24 and 25 and there are three powerful parables about faithfulness and stewardship. We looked at the parable of the faithful servant and the evil servant, that it reminds us that faithfulness is a big deal to God, that this whole world, everything we're doing is an audition. It's trying us out for what's to come, that Jesus is going to return to this earth and he's gonna reign and rule and who's gonna do it with them? Us, so good. The second thing we looked at is the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. No point in going through life with a lamp with no oil. That's crazy. Like my car, I'm driving it and didn't realize I had no oil and my engine cracked. A very expensive lesson. And friends, we need to be not just getting ready, but we need to stay ready. And today we're going to unpack one of my favorite parables, the parable of the talent. Such a powerful parable. Let's just jump right in. Matthew 25, 14 says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and he delivered his goods to them. To one, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. This is powerful. Each person received a measure of treasure, these talents but it was according to their ability. Verse 16, then he who had received the five talents, he went and he traded with them and he made five more, another five talents. That's awesome. He had five, now he's got 10. Verse 17, and likewise he went, he who had two gained two more. He's like, listen, I'm, I'm gonna double my two. I have two and now I have four. But he who had received one, he dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and he settled his accounts with them. And so he who had received five talents came and he brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained another five more talents besides them. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. This is such a big deal. This is a picture of heaven. This is us meeting before God. And he looks at our life and says, how well did you steward what I gave you according to your ability? And look, I've multiplied it. Look what we've done. 
He says, I'm going to make you ruler over many things. And joy, enter into the joy of, of your Lord. And going into verse 22, he who also received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents beside them. And his Lord said to him, well done. Notice he didn't say, well, you didn't do five? No, no. He said, well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. And I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received one talent, he came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. And I went and hid your talents in the ground. Look, there, you have what's yours. But the, his Lord, he answered, he said to him, you wicked and lazy. Listen, they're brothers, they hang out. Wickedness and laziness, they, they, they like to be together. You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to deposit my money in with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10. He can be trusted. Verse 29. For to everyone who has more will be given and he who will and he will have an abundance. But for him who does not have, meaning who's been wicked and lazy and squandered what I've given, buried it, wasted it. Even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's so many things in this parable. We could spend weeks. In fact, we could spend months on this parable. Like he is saying to him, listen, you wicked and lazy servant. And the reason why he's saying it is because he says, you're lying. If you truly believe that I, I didn't, didn't you know, profit where I sold, I didn't do all this stuff and you knew we'd be hard. If you knew all of that, you should have at the very least took it to the bank. But instead, you were just being lazy. You were upset with me because I didn't give you more and you thought, ah, it's just one and you wasted it. You squandered it. And friends, talent here is not referring to your ability. It's referring to to the resources that God has given you. This was a measure of money and a very large measure of money. And so this person that was complaining and he had so much and listen, all of it belonged to the master. He didn't have to give any of it. And he was so good, he gave it to them based on their ability. So it's not like you can say, well, how come I didn't get more? Listen, God is so good. He's not gonna give us more than we can handle. So for the one five, that's what he can handle. He turned it into 10. And for the one two, he turned it into four. And the one who had one, his heart wasn't right towards his master. And he chose to be wicked and lazy. And as a result, friends, the end wasn't well. He is referring to hell. He's not talking about some, some place where it's, it's not as fun. Oh, he's saying, I've got options for you. You can be a part of my kingdom. I have prepared a place for you. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. Like I'm, I've already got the job description written up for you. Again, heaven is not some place where we're going to be hanging out on clouds, eating grapes. No, friends, we're going to be reigning and ruling with our Lord. That when you read in the book of Revelation, Jesus is going to come here to this earth. He's going to reign and rule for a thousand years. And who's going to be reigning and ruling with him? It's going to be us. Remember the conversations as you read through God's, God's words. In Paul's letters, Peter's letters, James letters, they encourage us and help us understand that we, we got to get this thing figured out here, how we get along with each other, because we're going to be looked upon to judge the nations. This is a big deal. And part of our audition is how well we steward the resources we have now. And so what do we do? Well, friends, number one, we need to welcome the talent that God has given us. Welcome your talents, beginning in 2514. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. This be the Lord who called his own servants and he delivered his goods to them. This is his church. This is the body of Christ. This is us. 
And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a, on a journey. This is Jesus leaving us with this responsibility. How well will you steward it? Each according to our ability. And then he who would receive five talents went and he traded with them. He welcomed them. He received them and he began to work with them and he made five talents more. This is so powerful. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. These two welcomed those talents. Thank you, master. I don't deserve anything, but thank you for trusting me with these five. Thank you for trusting me with these two. You didn't have to give me anything. I welcome these talents. Thank you, God. But he who received one, listen to what he does. He went and he dug in the ground. What kind of mess? You got a bunch of money and you're going to put it in the ground. And he hid his Lord's money. That is terrible. Like, seriously, what are you thinking? You want me to trust you with more? What did you do with what I gave you? I buried it. Like, that's crazy. Like so many people, they bury their talent. Like all of this that God has put within you, they bury it. Why? And, and then you want God to give you more. It doesn't make sense. It is so crazy. You know, as, as parents, we look at our children and, and we have ideas and thoughts and things we want to do. But man, when it comes down to it, like, hey, you know what? I got to slow down on some of what I want to do because I need my child to rise to the occasion to be able to enjoy what I've got planned for them. It's a big deal. But friends, if I'm honest, I've screwed it up myself that I've been just like that guy with all this talent and this ability at the last moment. I wasted it and it was it was costly but i learned from it and friends i had a little job you know i my first job i had the opportunity of working with my mom we had a daycare and that was great it, it taught me so much and helped me to be be a good dad honestly you know learning how to change diapers at an early age all those things but then i stepped into my first corporate job you had to wear some khaki and you had to wear a red shirt and you can fill in the details. So I got my, my my khakis and my nice shirt on and I'm walking around and they give me this job. Man, gosh, over like 25 years ago. That's crazy. But I got this job and I'm a card attendant. I love this job. Part time cashier. It's all good. And so I spent a lot of time going in and out of the store and, and I got on my nice khakis and, and I'm doing my thing. But I noticed that all of my my friends and other fellow card attendants. They were laughing at me because they were wearing jeans and a pullover, a hoodie pullover. And I'm wearing khakis and a nice shirt. And they're like, man, what's going on with you with this uniform? Well, listen, I'm a, I'm a military guy and I've been wearing uniforms since, since Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Junior ROTC, Senior ROTC, active duty. Like I'm a, I am that guy. So I'm cool with it. This is my uniform. Listen, this is an easy uniform. But man, day in, day out, day in, ha ha, you wearing a uniform, ha ha. And nobody said anything to these guys. My well, friends, it was one of those days where I was running a little bit late trying to head to work and I didn't pre-plan and didn't pre, you know, think ahead and iron my uniform for work the day before. And so I had a pair of jeans just sitting over in the corner and I thought, you know what? I'm scheduled to be a card attendant today anyway. And they all wear jeans, pull over, what about me? I'm going to do it. And so I do. And I put it on and it's been a whole year now, right? And I walk into work and I'm feeling like, yeah, say something. And as I walk in, I see one of the store managers, not assistant store manager, but like one of the store managers. She looks at me and she goes, oh, Jason. And I'm like, what, what, what? Like, what did I do? What happened? And I realized that, oh man, I am out of uniform. And she calls me into her office and she says, Jason, I am just so disappointed in you. And she opens up an appraisal. I had been there a year and looking at this appraisal, it was beautiful. It could have been framed. And she says, look, and she read with me every line, five, 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 five. And then the one dress and appearance, she takes out a pen, holds that appraisal and and writes in four and then proceeds to write 
He has been impeccable until today. And I cannot in good conscience allow him to keep this five. And then moves over to the raise and marks it down by 50 cents. Oh man, it just hurt my heart. And then she proceeds to tell me about my talent, about my ability, and about my character, and all of these things that we've been watching you for a year. We've been so proud of you. And instead, you're looking at these guys over here. And then she says this to me. She says, they don't care about themselves. They don't care about this organization. And there's no future for them here. But there's one for you here if you choose to think about what you're doing and you you do the right thing even when nobody's looking. That ultimately there's a day and time coming where you will be rewarded. You see, I had forgotten that and I had gotten so frustrated and got tired of hearing all of those things. And in that moment, I didn't welcome my talent. But that leads to the second thing. I didn't water my talents. This is so important. Matthew 25, 19. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and he settled accounts with them. And so he who received five talents came and he brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained another five talents besides them. He watered them. He was faithful with them day by day. He was like, listen, I don't care about what they say. I will wear the khaki. I will wear the red. I will wear it. And look at what I've done. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a little thing. Like, think about it. Putting on khakis is a little thing. And I didn't do it. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. <laughs> he goes on and, and he talks to the, to the guy with the two. He who also had two talents came and said, Lord, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. And look, I've gained two more talents beside them. And his Lord said to him, well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, such a small little thing. And I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. This is so powerful. It so reminds me of that day when I walked in. It was a little thing and I didn't water it. In that moment, I allowed just laziness to settle in. Friends, the third thing. It's don't waste your talents. Don't waste them. Day in and day out, I was trying my best and I was on the right path. <laughs> but then listen, verse 20, 24, Matthew 25. Then he who had received the one talent, he came and he said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man to reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. Like, listen to this. You are talking to your boss, to your master. Like, this is a big deal. It says here, uh, servant, but this is slave master. This is a big deal. This person has control over your life. And this is how you speak to them. This is crazy. I knew you to be hard. I knew that you reap what you haven't sown. Like this could not be further from the truth. Like this is not the heart of your master. And he calls him out on it. He says, and I was afraid and I went and hid your talent into the ground. Look, have what's yours. Here you go. I don't want it anymore. But his Lord answered and he said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Like you knew this? Like if you really believe this? So then you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have had received back my own with interest, like something. Like I have gone for a long time and there should be some return on this investment. I believe in you. I trusted you. I've given to you my own treasure to steward. And you didn't even put it in the bank. And then he says, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. That is so powerful. Like instead of complaining and murmuring with the one, could at least put it in the bank. 
For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But to, for him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And these words here, and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is so powerful. What he is saying is, I do not want you to go to the place of the lazy and the slothful and the wicked. I want you to be such a good steward over what I've given you because I am I'm preparing you for what's to come. I want you with me, standing beside me. I want you to enjoy the glory of your Lord, that when Christ returns, he is wanting you and you and you and me and all of us to join with him. This is so good. But he's saying, can you be faithful over a little thing? You know, as the story continued, I worked there and I never forgot that day. And I continued to wear my red and my khaki faithfully and little by little. Hey, Jason, come here. Can you help run the cashiers today? Not just be on the cash register, but can you lead the cashier team today? Well, why sure. Hey, Jason, can you help run the customer service desk? Sure. Hey, Jason, can you help us close down the store today? It was amazing. I was so overwhelmed by it all. And I watched all those people one by one who laughed at me. Transition. There was no place for them in the organization because they refused to do a little thing. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you through this message? Father, I am so thankful that you have asked us to take care of these little things. You've asked us to be good stewards, God, over the little things, over the time we spend with you, over the time we invest in the relationships you've given us. Father, over our spouse, over our children, over, Father, those people that you've put within our lives. Father, I pray that we would not take today for granted, that we would be found, God, not just getting ready, but staying ready, that we would be found, God, not being like the foolish virgins, not being like the evil servant father but like the wise that you will return and that we will hear well done my good and faithful servant father i pray these things in jesus name amen well friends listen this is not a message to cause you to feel guilty if you found yourself being like i was in that day wearing the wrong thing friends repent it's that simple. Repenting is more than just asking for forgiveness. It's saying, I am choosing to turn my heart and my life around. And Lord, I choose you. I want your word to be the lamp and a guide unto my feet. I want your Holy Spirit to guide and lead and direct me. I want, Father, you to be in complete control over my life as my Lord, as my Savior, as my Master, as my King, because I trust you when you say, I go and prepare a place for you, and I'm looking forward to hearing those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. God bless you. We can't wait to connect with you all next week.